Um, <laughs> so uh, Zach wants the pickle to be floppy. So I'm making a floppy pickle right now, and I'm about to test it out. Okay. <laughs> this place is a mess. And there we have it. <laughs> you guys can see that, right? <laughs> I, uh, I didn't expect that. When he pitched the idea, I didn't think it'd be so much work. Because <laughs> um, it turned out we were making like not really one game, but like a ton of little games. I think this one, you're inside a mouth. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> cool. Uh, all right. Where are we at? Yesterday, Amy and Aaron did heroic efforts to get the game kind of running. Uh, here's my understanding of where we are on network bugs. We are working around them or special casing them. Yeah. <laughs> when everything was broken and networking was, everything was in shambles and it was, I think, the day after the midpoint. Like it was the day that we should have had our crap together and we didn't. It's like day six or something. Yeah. Um, we were all in a dark place. We just didn't know if we were going to get things to work. There was that unknown element of there's this bug, it broke everything. And, and in fact, I think you guys were filming at the moment we figured out what it was. Um, there was no jubilation. We weren't ready for that emotion yet. But we figured it out and after that, I think that day, was this yesterday? I don't understand time anymore. <laughs> things are better. Things aren't great yet. We still got a lot of work to do, but that in itself is fun. As, as stressful as, as AF is and how much work there is, I do find myself thinking it will be sad to go back to normal life. I think it'll feel like a vacation at first. <laughs> She's like, oh, I can go home at a normal time and I'll work from home and I see my wife. She misses me. But, uh, but yeah, it won't be as sort of like close-knit, harrowing, everyday adventure. It's awesome to just be thrown like headfirst in with all these people that I work with every day. And this is far more of a struggle than everyday development. So uh, it's, it's been really fun. No, no regrets. It's, it's pretty awesome. I'm pretty proud of what we've got. And I think I'll be really proud of what we deliver. Oh, it's the static camera, but it's yeah. different? Why is it not? What do you mean? Uh, that's not what the game usually looks like when you run it. <laughs> It is, though. So. This was function yeah. pass. Yes, function pass. Yes. All right. Can we get everybody? Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, yeah. Emily, Emily, puppet show, puppet Thank show. You. Puppet show, puppet show. Put on a puppet I show. There we go. Oh, you still see my face. Yay. Woo. Switch the puppets. Yeah, there we go. Awesome puppet show. <laughs> <laughs> I love the bird. It's so good. Woo. You see my face? Yeah, yeah. The, head, the head's really, really big. Yay! <laughs> All right, let's go get beers then. That works for me. Beers of cheers. <laughs> you definitely look like you're on a also get drunk, and that would totally get yeah, you. Is this like sampling beers, or can I just have like a big glass of beer? This one, the glass is that gross stuff across the street. There's the other one. There's two ideas. What beer do you have there? Uh, it's a summer IPA from a uh, brewery across the street. So. How is it? Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's a little citrusy. It's nice, light, good for a sunny day. I mean, I'm sure we'll probably get a first pass of anything, everything in by Monday, but um, for this, for how many moving parts there are in the game, it's not like a first pass is going to be at all good. We'll at least need to do one round of iteration. So some of the games, if they don't get that round of iteration, I think will kind of feel like nonsense of like, well, I don't really know what was happening here, and then it ended, um, which won't be great. Um, but I think we're over the, the worst of it. So now it's just like, how fast can we get everything in? Um, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it ends up. Making games super easy. Super easy and fun to do. Yeah, it's just going to stand there forever. I think we're just going to leave it like this. And it's going to lead the parade that is this game. It's perfect. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, because that's how the d d design changed. Uh, they were they were grumpier before, I guess. Now they're a little more. They have a little more life in them, which is better. 
he's a really cool guy. Um, uh, so he's going to be fun to work on. So you're the sole animator? I'm the sole animator. Yeah. yeah. I like these guys, they were very comical. I mean, you can tell just from a single frame that this guy is, has a lot of personality. Like, I'd love to do his, his little, like, evil, creepy, <laughs> like... Mr. Burns hands. His, yeah, his hands. Animation in general, it's always the small things that seemingly don't matter. Yeah, I kind of have them, uh, that's the flying animation that I put in, that people, when they find them, really like them. I was imagining he, he's just like, like the wind hitting him, like <laughs> wind turbulence kind of thing. It's a really short animation. And it works well because we have the arms and the legs uh, simulate as well. So he's kind of, they're all kind of like dangling. When you move them around, it feels really satisfying because they get left behind. And he has a little trail that Jeremy put in, so. Uh, it's working. Uh, I don't know, like, I think somewhere along the way, the original vision was obsolete, you know? It was like, uh, too many other cool things have been introduced. Like, the whole clay tech is way cooler than I ever thought it could be. Uh, it's way more fun and uh, interesting to fly around as little spirits than I thought it would be. Like, I thought that would be just a boring part of the game. I guess maybe it's the contrast of different... Uh, traversal elements, like you have really slow lumbering guys that actually can do stuff, but then when you fly out, you're completely mobile and can go anywhere, and you're way faster, but you can't really interact with the world, so. Uh, so, I don't know, it's, it's totally evolved. Which seems like that's okay if we, gosh dang. Oh no. This, this flag is a bad to set, because we might use that to check if someone else can hop in or not. Uh, today was a big uh, refactor that Matt and I did of how the pots work. Since I had the basic multiplayer working, we wanted to extend that to other aspects of the game. I'm uh, kicking this guy's ass. <laughs> the biggest one was when you craft a pot, the tech that Matt's been working on with the wheel, whatever you make gets sent to everybody else and they see that pot. We hadn't really gotten that tech working. And as we started doing that we and getting combat working a little better, we ran into sort of a bottleneck where it forced us to take a few steps back and rebuild everything out from the knowledge we have now. So we did that and we got it in and it's working pretty good. Um, it definitely seems to be a better sort of way of building it. Yeah, progress. Huh? Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's really neat seeing uh, all the systems kind of working, sort of. A lot more than they were yesterday. We're looking for Tucker, but uh, he must be at the beer party. <laughs> Unfortunate t timing. You always lose out to beer when it comes to Tucker. All right, so now to look at bugs. <laughs> Whoa! Holy shit! You just punched me <laughs> to outer space. And you um, hit somebody in the air while they're jumping. They go flying across the map. Oh. That's yeah. something you wanted, right? Wasn't yeah. that like well, a... I don't think it was expected. Oh. I, think, I think it just happened, mm -hmm. and uh, we're probably going to keep it, <laughs> because it's awesome. Derek, are we going to keep it? Yeah. Good. And there's a lot of um, funny accidents in this game. <laughs> it's cool. Or maybe they're all just really intentional, and Derek's a genius. <laughs> no. Definitely not that. It's the combat. I think the combat still feels a little random, just like I'm flailing around. We can work on tuning that a little bit, hopefully over the next few days, to make it feel a little more strategic. Also, we don't have the pot attributes in, so if you make a smaller pot, you should be weaker but faster, and a bigger pot should be slower but be able to take more damage. So once we get that in, I think that'll be a little bit more fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I got a crash. Crash. Did you get any text? Did everyone crash? I tried to get in one of these debug pots and it crashed. Yeah, maybe there's a couple of the old pots on the map or something. Yeah, it's looking uh, sweet. They're definitely the um, uh, The biggest uh, problem I had playing was that when I created a pot, I couldn't get off the kill. Based on just this little amount of testing, I think we need to change the way you get in pots. I think, um, I think you shouldn't be able to get in pots that are made by the other team. Right. Yeah. So I think if it like did that up to like 50 and... Yeah. That's probably on Jeremy though. Cool, cool. All right, jump back no, in No, if you bit. get out and drop your pot there. Yeah, but you're not gonna wanna do that because there's safe zone. We don't have safe zones. 
<laughs> but we will. I mean, that's, the thing we? That, that's the thing that we will have. Yeah. Yeah, next, next bits I hope to get in some of the game loop where you can actually kill the base and win or lose so you could actually start and finish a game. You know, like we don't really have that in. Right now you can just wail on each other forever, so um, that's the next bit to hit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is like... Uh, the most fun I've had so far just because uh, we've like, really gotten a lot of mileage out of Miyuki's exuberance. Mm -hmm. uh, on screen there's like UI telling you how the cooking is doing and depending on how you do it there'll be lines to call and respond. Mmm. Mmm. Delicious. <laughs> She's so great. What a disaster! And then we got some fun ones for like rail slides. Let's go! <laughs> we've, I've been checking on that game pretty regularly. Um, and uh, every time I boot the game, it looks like completely different. So uh, right now, I think they're finally putting materials in. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing the next time I get to boot it, it's going to be like a whole new game again. Sweet. That sounds great. I love seeing the lava down here. That's pretty great, too. Cool. Oh, and then I'm going to do a pass on. Uh, um, so um, I guess we should show the rail if we want that to be an obvious rail slide. Right. But we'll, we'll put in the new rail for that later. And then I'm going to do a, um, a couple of um, platforms around that thing so yep. that it's a little bit easier to jump up on there and doesn't feel so much like it, because it kind of feels like you can't actually yeah, get up there right now. Yeah, it does look impossible. It looks pretty tall. Like, oh, sweet. Okay. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. Yeah. And getting more of these will be red, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yep. the far village really, really in the really background. Nice. Ooh. I love it. It's, getting, it's really, yeah. <laughs> Things are happening. <laughs> Stuff's coming together. It feels really good. People are doing pretty great work right now. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty excited to oh, see everything oh. as it's coming in. I just hit a thing. Hang on. Oh. Ah. I'm like running into like a little something. Oh, yeah, that's, yeah, collision. That's a good, good catch. Like it might be a little bit of a video game now. <laughs> just, just a little bit. It went from having uh, a lot of just uh, simple geometry. You can see uh, over there, it used to all look like that probably two days ago. <laughs> and then uh, everything got a coat of uh, texture paint. Uh, I did about four materials and just kind of tried to make them go as far as possible. What's your uh, process for putting materials together on a timeline like this? Uh, quick and dirty. Start off with a hand-painted texture um, that I do in Photoshop. So uh, I went with this kind of, it's kind of a Miyazaki style, simple kind of uh, crazy plated metal. Yeah, yeah, it's got a ton of character right now, even with just the few things that he's done. Um, I mean, that's credit to Levi, you know, and, uh, and to Paul as well for the way the props were modeled. He was jokingly saying this yesterday, but it's like, we're definitely making a Jack and Daxter level. Like, it's sort of that level of, like, uh, cartoonishness, which is, which is great. You know, I was expecting something much simpler given the amount of time that we had, so the fact that he was able to, like, achieve so much with so little, uh, was was really inspiring and just very gratifying to see. It's just uh, a little fine tuning and what's going on here? Uh, how do you feel about the quality of your work under the time constraints? Are you satisfied with it? Considering how much time you had? I'm never satisfied with my work, but so <laughs> was yes the right answer? <laughs> Not really. It won't hurt us with feelings. I think so I think this it gives you an uh, the idea, basically, of, of a game built in and, uh, 10 days, 12 days. Check that out. Look at that. That's awesome. You know, visually, everything is looking really great, and uh, the machines are working the way that they're intended to so far. So yeah, that stuff is, is amazing, and uh, thanks, Brian for doing that, you're the man. So all that stuff is awesome. Um, there are still like things, just big unknowns that I just haven't seen yet uh, in action, which is like, do you feel like you know what you're doing? I think a big thing is gonna be when gameplay comes in, we're gonna look at how art can help get player information across a little bit better. Um, signs, glowing lights on specific stations, um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, I mean, we haven't gotten the game to a playable point where we really have much feedback on what uh, a player will need. You know, we have not yet run through an entire round of like cooking every single ingredient in the order that you're supposed to with all the machines. Um, so that 
is still a big unknown, but uh, I mean, that's what those last two days are going to be about. Right. So this lighting. I don't know how deep we want to go on like a pause menu. No, it's controls, I mean, quit. I don't think we need a quit. Potentially, well, how do you get out of it? We need to make a decision about exactly how we're going to handle the creatures, how many parts, who's going to make them. Could you do a little a pair of legs for the biped as well? Oh, sure. I noticed when the creatures die, they flop over like a sack of potatoes, and we talked about them sort of like poofing? shrinking and poofing out of existence. And God knows what the science behind that is. There's a lot of science. <laughs> <laughs> Like T-1000. Yeah, you're like transcending into space-time right now. Oh boy. Last night I did a major pass, like going over all the combat parameters in the game, doing kind of uh, rough tuning of everything. Uh, made a huge difference in terms of how combat felt to kind of think about all of those parameters, how they interact with each other, and kind of make, make that tuning make sense. Hey, look at those legs. Oh, oh look God. At, look at those beautiful legs. <laughs> oh, God. And I'm playing with a keyboard. How do people feel about the uh, the wiggly legs? Uh, they don't look good. We can scale them. <laughs> like. I can't change the camera angle, can I? Nope. Uh, I want to pan down so I have a longer view. I want to be able to see where the balls are. I got a couple so good moments see. of that today. One was actually off team was, was showing the game to Carol um, and letting her play it uh, because she's not on the team. She hasn't been. <laughs> Uh, involved in all of the design of the game. And so there were a bunch of things that we're all familiar with about how the mechanics work that she had no exposure to. And uh, it definitely showed me that uh, we weren't communicating some of that well enough to the player. Uh, have you noticed any visual differences other than some of them are red and some of them are not red? No. Okay. I mean, some of them are red and some of them are bigger and smaller. And they appear to have different paint jobs, but only in the way that cows do. Uh huh. And Andy's been playing it and giving you feedback as well. Yep. It's you're you're trying to play off the stats, right? You're trying to play off this. This guy's got a health of X. You've got a health of Y. You've got a speed of X. He's got a speed of Y. And you're just it's this. How can you use that to your advantage in a very short amount of time? Yep. But it was fun watching him play because I I just added in that the new uh, scary red species. Uh, and he was wandering, just trying to find like one or two last creatures to, to get the last bit of food he needed. And he came across a red one. And he went, oh no, or something like that. It was just like, because he knew, he knew he had found the food he needed, but it was the hard one to get. Uh, but he didn't have time to ignore it. He had to deal with it right there. Uh, and it was great for me, because that was exactly what I wanted from that species, was recognize it, be afraid of it, but sometimes be forced to deal with it. Uh, and it just worked out perfectly that he wandered across it uh, at a point where he had to choose to deal with it. Um, uh, and so that was really, really satisfying for me. Uh, yesterday it was, it was starting to feel like a game and today it's starting to feel like the game we're trying to make. So I'm feeling really good about that.